Hey guys, I hope you're all are doing well. I want to try out a uh, another challenge in myself of trying to make a Bloodborne sounding track. Um, unfortunately, I'm absolutely obsessed with the game and its music, and I've been listening to it nonstop ever since I've been playing the game. But I've watched a lot of piano tutorials on YouTube um, that showcase uh, some Bloodborne music, and you can see how sort of you know, the piano notes, it's just showing all the different harmonies of different instruments within the orchestra to create these different soundtracks. Um, and I, I tried to reverse engineer how they how they composed some of their tracks. And now I'm not really a great composer or um, a great music theorist, but there's really a lot you can learn by just looking at how they play with harmonies, keys, going out of keys, especially with Bloodborne being very dissonant since it's very inspired by horror music and i wanted to see if i could you know learn what i've or take what i've learned and practice it myself um so what i have here is a little thing i made um it has like uh an a section over here and a b section which is more sort of chord oriented i can imagine more choirs um usually when i do this sort this sort of uh, approach to composing music i want to just imagine what each thing I'm writing for would be so stuff like over here this would be for a string maybe some brass to accompany these bottom notes either brass or more high more like a violin on top maybe a choir even for these ones here definitely cellos and ba double bass strings and here either choir adding some string like to the tops here as well um, because I, from the last video I made on the Elden Ring soundtrack, uh, type soundtrack that I made, I got really lost in just writing out chords, and once I wrote out the chords, I didn't really know how to make a melody on top of it. Um, so I think just, and I think I've, I've done sort of a similar thing here, but I'm slowly deviating from just, you know, writing the chords by themselves and just having them by themselves. So which each iteration, or each project that I do, I hope to create, like, to be fully masterful and mindful of what I'm trying to go for. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like just, just practice it so I can get a vision of what I'm working towards. Um, so let's take a look at what I've uh, written here. And so I've taken inspiration from a lot of the different pieces in Bloodborne. Uh, for instance, this uh, this bass section right here, this is inspired by you know the Cleric Beast soundtrack. Um, something like this. It's a lot of the tracks use this little technique. Uh, but I, I love how they have this. Da -da -da. It's a lot of Bloodborne soundtracks do that. Like Amygdala, you know, the Bloodborne uh, theme itself does that. And then I have really dissonant chords here, you know. If you take this and transpose it up to make it like this. It's really just a minor chord, but then you take it down here. And see something dissonant, dissonant, sad, and it's just... Oh, it's so gross. Like, I, I love it. Bloodborne is... The way they compose it is so cool. And especially with all the other Dark Souls soundtracks, too. They do the exact same thing. Really, like, off-sounding stuff. Um, and what I've noticed is that it's kind of hard to choose a key to stay into it. So uh, usually I just go for a root note. I think here it's uh, D. Uh, let me show the notes here real quick. Yeah, usually it's D for this one. Um, and just sort of play it by ear. Uh, and so eventually I want to just translate what I put into ear into music theory, <laughs> which I'm, I'm still trying to learn and practice on my own. Um, I don't really have any formal training with this. I'd really like to, but um, it's, it's fun to just learn from what you see around you. 
and it sort of brings a little humanity for like the Lady Maria soundtrack. I don't know why I envisioned for this bass part, it just sounds cool in piano form. Um, but what's most important is just the notes being played. And if you notice with the Bloodborne soundtrack, it's kind of hard to pin down a certain theme or a certain style to it, just because they establish a certain style with the, let's say, Cleric Beast. That's the first theme you hear. Uh, but then they just deviate from it a lot. Um, the Father Gascoigne track, it has very similar elements since it's, you know, representing beasthood. But then you get to the Witches of Hemwick, which is entirely different. It's very slow and... Uh, it's very disturbing. But then you go to Rom, which is also very slow, but very, like, ethereal, and, and it's mysterious. Uh, and then you go to Lady Maria, who almost sounds like a Dark Souls soundtrack. <laughs> to German, who's just a sad, somber track. There's so there's so much like different things going on in the Bloodborne soundtrack that's sort of hard to pin down which one you which style you want to take. So uh, it's just just go off of what you think. I'm just going off of what I believe it sounds um, sounds like Bloodborne, um, especially with these like quick quick staccatos here. That's that's in almost all of the soundtracks at least. Uh, so you can pick up a few different themes and techniques that they used here. Um, so I'm going to take this and then transpose it into a full orchestra. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to show my process this time since I don't plan on doing it all in one session. So I guess I will either start recording halfway through the process or when I'm finished with the process to show you how I turned this into an actual, actual orchestra. Um, I'll be back with the next part. <laughs> All right, so I did uh, a little bit of the first part, let's say the first half of this uh, piano section, and I sort of stretched it out a bit to, um, you know, more ease more into the melodies uh, in here. So I'm going to play what I have, and then I'll explain the process of transposing the piano to orchestra. We'll start with the uh, the bass strings or the whole string section. So I took um, this part. The way Bloodborne does a lot of their melodies, at least with the uh, the really low spiccatos, is um, they make it really dissonant. This is almost like sort of very, I guess, metal in a way. It's from what I've seen, uh, a lot of uh, like from my uh, what is it? From my Mick Gordon, the only thing they fear is you to Bloodborne orchestration. They did this like a very similar thing here, where it was very. Those are just very close together. I know Lovemore doesn't use a lot of percussion, but I thought it was pretty cool. Had some little boom into it. Cello's doing the same thing. Then here we have the violas. And the melodies from before right now is being played with the uh, Violins 1, which right now is a spiccato, which you can't really hear that much, but it slowly fades in as we get into like, the actual sustains. Um, and these different colors represent the different styles of string. 
This one is a Marcado. This is a Sustain. Over here is the Spicado. To do the quick. And this is a Tremolo. So I load up all these, uh, let me bring up the patch here real quick. So I load up all these into one patch of contact. And what this does is it sets each of these, the Spiccato, Staccato, Marcato, Sustains, and Tremolo, all into different MIDI channels. Uh, and in the piano roll, this translates into the colors right here. Um, at least that's this is an easy method that I use. Um, I like having each of them on separate MIDI channels, so I don't have to use key switches switching between them. Um, the one con that I've run into doing this method is that if you want to control each of the... Um, the modulation wheel over here for each of these you it only sets the first one when you go into when you make um uh, editor thumbnail so instead you have to go into um where is it automation midi automation and then go into the patch itself for instance this one go into settings and then dynamics this is what essentially affects this and then you have to go into you know your your um modulation tracks and then assign them to one of these. I'm not going to do it right now since it's get really, it gets really messy unless I really have to. Um, but that's my method of uh, working with a bunch of different string articulations. Um, and then the brass, let me see the brass. There we go. So brass uh, plays a pretty prominent but very percussive role in a lot of Bloodborne's music. Um, as opposed to uh, strings, strings are just mostly used for melody um, and rhythm. But here, brass is used as melody as well as uh, percussion. Um, with like the clusters here, Bloodborne does that a lot. Yeah, stuff like that, and then... I'm just sort of improvise, add your own elements to it. And then of course the oh, crushal effects. Always gotta transition to new areas. Bloodborne loves to use these risers and stuff, as well as just Dark Souls music in general. So yeah, this is the first part, pretty simple. The second half is what's gonna be a bit more complicated. Um, I imagine a lot of these chords are gonna be using choir, so that's what I'll be doing in the next part. Um, so transition to that. All right. I think I've since, uh, finished the track since we last, uh, left off. Um, over here is the B section based on, let me remove these, the piano section over here. So I'm going to play what I have here real quick, and then I'll show you what I, uh, what I translate into orchestra and break it down uh, afterwards. So uh, since last time I had to change, what is it, this part, since I'll show you with uh, the horns and strings, but when I added this melody it sounded really heroic. <laughs> and not, you know, scary at all. <laughs> I'll show you with the horns, it, it really shows with the horns. Um, so I, I just and I just put it down and it sounds a lot more menacing. Um, so what I have is over here, and don't worry, I'll, I'll play the final thing all together in, uh, at the end.
yeah, the choir works really well here. Um, where is it? I'll show you what the horn sounded like when I changed uh, the melody. So is this part, I'll put it up here, as well as had the violins down here. So all this is sort of just playing it by ear and seeing how it sounds uh, as I'm making it. Since it's kind of hard to tell when you're you're writing with a piano like that or earlier. So sometimes you'll run into something like that where it doesn't sound exactly how you want it. And it's okay to change afterwards. Um, the piano, writing it out in a piano is just sort of to help me understand the harmonies that are going on. And if I want like a note to match like a melody to match in the chord that's playing, then I can do that. Like over here. So I'll have like this higher violin playing. It'll match the choir that's playing as well. Uh, both A's at that point. So in terms of the choir, right now what I'm using is um, the 8 Dio Requiem. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty old plugin, but I like their uh, how it sounds and the key switches that it uses. Um, for instance, I showed this in my Elden Ring uh, theme as well. But when you just have the choir playing, I have the key switches down here to change the actual vowels that are being presented. Now, one thing I noticed is that uh, it sounds very full, but almost too full. And I think that's because I played full chords instead of... Um, I've seen what a lot of themes use based on, you know, piano rolls that I see on YouTube. Is um, they just have the tops and bottoms of the chords. Um, or they just have they just have an interval playing. Um, so I'm going to try that at some point in the future as well. But they... Yeah, it's, it, does, it sounds very full. It doesn't sound Bloodborne, which is more you know, a bit contained, personal, and which makes it about, sound a bit more creepier and, and horror-like. Um, this kind of sounds like a Dark Souls or an Elden Ring theme instead of a, a Bloodborne theme. But I think I think the themes of extreme dissonance are still applied here, um, where Elden Ring, you can have other themes, such like other feelings of, like, heroism or um, a positive ending. Bloodborne is just dark and scary all the time. Um, at least this is what my interpretation of it is. Having a planner like this really helps, uh, at least me, who is who doesn't really... I used to do all this on the fly, like I would just, I would just throw choir and string together and see what happened. But I'm really glad that this is a, uh, a, a new method that I want to be implementing a lot and just planning out my work in the future. Um, so I'll be continuing this project and hopefully making more types of uh, themes. Um, I'm obsessed with Bloodborne, unfortunately, so I'm going to try to be making more songs like that. So this will definitely not be the last one. If you guys have any tips for improvement or you want to see more, then definitely let me know. Um, but I will see you guys in the next project that I make. So thank you guys for watching. Oh, as well as here is the final product altogether.